Welcome to part 5 of the SOLIDWORKS tutorial using DriveWorks Express. We left off from last from part 4 tutorial here where we need to design our form for driving this assembly. Um, the form will give the customer the options for driving the configurations or the dimensions of this door. Um, you'd put that category here in the name we've got all these different options here for our categories a text box for example for our first one we'd go with the job jumper we'll go job number rather job number we'll do a text box you just type in the name or the number of the job um, for the others a numeric text box if we were to go with a numeric text box you'd give a minimum value or a maximum value. This would be good for driving the width of our door, height of our door. Got the drop down menu. This will work well for our configurations. Um, you put a list of options there and it'll come up in a drop down list. Spin button, similar to the uh, numeric text box, but here we'll have a minimum value, maximum value, but then increments of quarter of an inch or half inch or something like that. So there's that option. Check box. That's uh, your yes or no. If you want, say, you want a panel or you don't want the panel in there. Check box, yes or no. So those are the different options. For the job number, go with the text box move ahead and there it is right there we want to add another category this category we'll call the customer name we'll leave that as a text box We'll make it not required okay add door width for this we want to use numeric text box We'll just give it a minimum value of 12, maximum value of 150. Okay, I skipped ahead, filled them all out to save a little time. I put door width in, gave it a minimum, maximum value. Door height, same thing, a numeric text box, uh, min, max value. Style type. I used a drop down and I put the name of this configurations in the options so that when DriveWorks goes to look for that configuration it can find it. So that's what I named them. I added a few other configurations. Um, so there they are. Same with the rail type. Use the configuration name so that uh, DriveWorks can find that configuration. Style width. I gave that a numeric text box again, a minimum and maximum value for style width, rail width. Panel type is the same thing, a drop down and then a, the name of the configuration. So we have our form here. It's a nice little form. It'll give us the options that we need to drive our uh, assembly. Um, let's open up our default here. Um, so once we've got that all looking good, we go to do a, a test run. We can set a default, our default settings. So if the job number, just call it zeros. Customer name is that. Door width, we'll go 20 inches, 30 inches for the height. Style type, we'll go S1, R1. Typical width. At the cabinet door shop, is about two and a half inches for the styles and rails being the width. Um, and then, of course, there's all kinds of options, um, but that's usually what a customer will, will pick. Panel, we'll go with a P1. And we'll make those settings our default settings. Click the next arrow, click it again. Now here's where we uh, build our rules for our door. 
remember in part um, part four we captured the dimensions and um, here's where we'll find those so the file names put a check mark these are the rules that are missing that we need to take care of click next arrow and there they are um, double click on it this is the rules box this is the, the heart and soul of DriveWorks Express this is where you make everything size the way you want it the configurations to pop up that you want uh, there's lots of options here the inputs that the customer puts in those options are there um, put some quick text in math logic if and statements lots of options for driving your assembly and here we're dealing with the default assembly um, this is how it's going to be saved into whatever file you have chosen uh, to save it in but for default assembly I just want I just want the job number I don't want it to say default assembly and then job number so what I'll do is put an asterisk that uh, that takes away the default assembly title for the assembly and come to our drop down job number and so when the when the job is saved when the assembly is saved that's what you'll see just the job number we'll go okay and then we have th three more rules we'll just go ahead and select them all because they're all going to be about the same and this is just going to be job number okay so you have these will these parts will be saved and they'll say style one and then tacked on the end will be the job number say okay oh looks like we'll do them one at a time job number job number it'll automatically put the equals in there so it works out and those are good click the back arrow file names are taken care of now we have our configurations uncheck file names check configurations click next arrow configurations for style one double click on it and here the option will be will be whatever the customer decides they want and this will be the style type and we put in style type and the result is our default s1 style so that's good say so okay configurations for the rail will be whatever the input is which is the rail type the default is r1 and that looks good same thing for panel panel type P1, and that looks good. So now the dimensions. Uncheck configurations, check dimensions. So these are the dimensions that we captured in the assembly.